Hi, everyone. I'm Rick Bensignor. Today is Tuesday, July 12th, and welcome to this week's In the No Trader show. A couple of things of note. First off, this is going to be my last show for Stock Charts TV. Uh, I will explain further in a moment. Um, for the show today, uh, let's talk about why I do what I do. And then for our last sector focus that we'll do for stock charts, we're going to take a look at the materials uh, sector. We have not looked at them for quite some time, and they're kind of at an interesting technical juncture. So we'll take a look at the XLB, which is the materials spider ETF, the XLB against the S&P. So we see it in relative terms. And then we'll take a look at um, as many of these names as we can fit into the show. These are ranked um, in um, market weight as being the, the biggest uh, component names to the XLB. So chances are, if you own material names, the names you own will likely fall into the category of the ones that we have listed here. To sign up to get my weekly tactical ETF trader report, go to inthenotrader.com to get same thing for my monthly 7-Eleven report. Uh, same website, in the note Trader, And that is my website that several years ago I set up for um, reports for individual investors and um, financial consultants. I, the, the bulk of what I do in life is for institutional clients, um, but I thought I would um, you know, do and share some of the work I do for individual investors, and that's the place to go to get it. Now, let me show you just how good we've been uh, with the 7-Eleven report. Through June 30th, for the first six months of the year, we are outperforming the S&P by 310 basis points. We've outperformed every single month this year. And for the 23-month history that we've been doing the 7-Eleven report, I actually noticed over the last month that in the spreadsheet calculation, there was something wrong. We're actually doing even better than we expected by almost 100 basis points. We are outperforming the S&P in just shy of two years by 761 basis points which, as I've said before, would put us in the top 10% of all active money managers in the industry. So if you have money in spiders or passive indexes, you really want to consider subscribing to the 7-Eleven report. Um, we outperform consistently, not every single month, but again, every month this year. And uh, it's approximately between, I think it's 75 to 80% of all months we outperform. And our upside downside capture ratio is 2.5, uh, which is also just phenomenal. So um, I highly encourage you to look into the 7-Eleven report. Um, the YouTube channel, my first show will be two weeks from today, Tuesday, July 26th. Um, go to the link I'm going to show you right here. It's https colon slash slash bit.ly slash 3z ujzt and that's a zero at the end. If you go to that now, that's how you can follow my YouTube channel and uh, you will be able to continue to follow me um, as I depart from stock charts and, and start up my own in the no trader YouTube channel. All right, let's take a look at, uh, oh, also my Twitter handle at in the no trader. So follow me on Twitter. Um, and I'll certainly keep you updated on, uh, things I'm doing and, and new, new shows coming up. Uh, so follow me on in the no trader. All right, let's take a look at the, um, the 11 Spider Macro ETFs. Um, and this is simply month to date, the month of July. And, you know, today's only the 12th. Why are we looking at month to date? Well, because it's the beginning of a new quarter. 
It's the beginning of the second half of the year. You want to kind of get a sense of where the flows have been. And to us just looking at what's happened year to date um, and the, the consistency that we've seen in energy still outperforming year to date and consumer discretionary and tech uh, and financials underperforming, um, you get a much better sense of what new money and allocations are doing to start the month. So the S&Ps as of yesterday is up, uh, services and technology are, well, actually not communication services, sorry, discretionary technology are outperforming something they've not done recently. Um, energy continues to near-term underperform uh, and with oil down over $7 today, Certainly, you're going to see energy continue to underperform, um, but you get a sense that there is some bidding into the beaten down stocks um, and that there are flows coming in to start this second half of the year. Doesn't mean it's going to stay that way, but if you're looking to put money into the market, then you at least want to take a look at where to start off this second half of the year you're seeing flows go into. So that's why we're looking at such a short time period. All right, let's go back here and just talk about, I'm sorry, here we go. Um, why I do what I do. And this comes down to a decision I made in, I think it was 2018, um, to take the information and the knowledge that I have from being on the street for over, 40 years at some of the best, uh, most prestigious firms on the street in some of the most prestigious job positions in those firms and take that along with the 12 years of background I had in trading on the floor of multiple commodity exchanges in the pit where I really learned to understand what trading is all about, to bring individual investors the same type of models that institutions look at and make decisions off of. And that was a commitment that I made to myself and to you, the listening public, to do that such that you had a much better chance of aligning yourselves with what institutions are doing as compared to the standard technical indicators that most individual investors use and unfortunately can't really get ahead with. And part of the reason that that's the case is because most of the time, you're not doing what institutions are doing. In fact, you're often opposite of what institutions are doing. And although collectively, the public can push and pull the market to some degree, it's basically the institutions who uh, determine the overall direction of a particular security and the market collectively at any given time. So I thought the right thing to do in order to give the public access to that type of information was to actually create the whole in the know trader space and to provide market newsletters that show you much better about what institutions are doing than 99% of all available newsletters and people to follow out there. So it's why I do what I do. It Part of it is um, my way of giving back to um, the community at large for a successful career I've had. And also inside of me as a person has always been someone who enjoys teaching. And for years when I taught at NYU, I, I kind of had the same thought process. 
you know, you make very little money being a teacher. So I wasn't, after a whole day of working on Wall Street, I certainly wasn't spending a couple hours at NYU in order to make extra money because it's truly negligible um, what an adjunct um, instructor would make. So I did it in, in the same regard to provide as much education as I could to uh, the public on, on how to better trade, how to understand market psychology from a whole different point of view, how to incorporate behavioral finance into your decision process um, as a trader, and to expose individuals to models and indicators that they virtually had no access to, and to a large part still don't. Um, so that's why I do what I do. And um, I enjoy doing it. And I've enjoyed uh, my three and a half years at Stock Charts doing it for you uh, under their umbrella. But um, at this point, it's time that I do this uh, completely branded on my own. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm branching off to, to create my own in the No Trader channel. Um, before we get into looking at these, uh, the sector and the individual names, uh, I, I want to offer up tremendous thanks to my producer, Rachel Ackley, who has been a professional from day one uh, that I've worked with her. She is an employee at Stock Charts. Uh, she is one of the best producers I've ever worked with. And my hat's off to her and my deep thanks for everything she's done uh, to help me grow this over the years and to give me her insights on the best way to uh, create a show for you that each week provides you with just, um, not, not just going through the names like we do of a sector, um, and giving you the deep analysis I do, but also in guiding me towards providing you a, let's call it an educational component each week. That came from her. And uh, so I, I thank her from the bottom of my heart for all the help she's given me in her professionalism uh, from the get-go. And I also want to thank Denby Wright, who has been the graphics designer who's helped me on a lot of things, um, helped me design the In The No Trader logo and other things I've done. Uh, so many thanks to Denvi also for his professionalism and his constant hard work um, in, in helping me along. So thank you both very much. Okay, let's take a look at the charts as we do. Let's move to XLB. And the reason why I wanted to look at materials this week is A, we haven't looked at them for a while, and B, take a look at what's been going on the last few weeks, uh, month or so in XLB. So materials broke beneath their cloud um, a month ago, and that's the first warning sign of potential changes. You'll notice they also broke a horizontal line of support that's somewhere just in and around the $79 level that should start major resistance on the way up because of uh, a year's or more worth of trapped buyers now who are stuck long higher. But when we look now too, we also noticed that the last four weeks in a row, including this week, the TDST line, which is the lowest low in the most recent nine count going up, is where this is holding support so 73.34, um, as well, actually that's 72.34, sorry, as well as the fact that the lagging line is just playing here with the bottom of the cloud and you know a, a breach like last week is nothing. It certainly can come right back up. Um, now, when I look at this, so you know, there is the potential to buy here with a fairly tight stop. Uh, you don't wanna see a Friday close really underneath this level. Resistance I've now highlighted in this yellow box, um, which includes the breakdown level, the current conversion line, the current baseline, and the bottom of the cloud. 
So going forward, yeah, there's some upside to the high 70s to low 80s and percentage wise, that's 10% or more. But realize that this should be really significant resistance um, such that this is not really a uh, likely long-term hold, but more of a trade. But you can at least think of doing something on a trading basis against this year with a fairly tight stop. So that's XLB. Now let's take a look at materials against the S&P before we get into the individual component names. So here is the chart going back. Um, this is the March 2020 low when COVID hit the market. So materials underperform, then largely outperform. What's important now is that there's a clear double top. We've got a clear double top there. We have support, I guess we could call it from here. So we're getting closer towards where we could expect materials to start to outperform. Uh, we're getting a bounce obviously this week, but too early to know if this is the bottom or not. Look, we can also say that there's some support down in here. So that this zone here from, uh, let's call it 0.18, uh, I guess about 0.1855 down to 0.1825 is a zone that uh, we'd start to be more interested in looking at materials to potentially uh, start to outperform again. So in the context of things, yeah, we're getting closer and there's a bounce this week, but too soon to say that this is uh, the bottom, which is, you know, I can't make that call yet, but we're late in, in somewhat of the decline if we expect to see some support against prior lows. All right, let's move now to individual names. Um, and so the highest um, weighted name in the XLB is actually a company called Lind, uh, L-I-N-D-E. And interesting, it's unless it's the, a, a um, new name of a company that existed in the past, I've actually never heard of it. Uh, so interesting. Now, the material space is not a space I play in a heck of a lot on my own. It's a very small component in the S&P, something close to, I don't know, uh, it's a few percent. Uh, so it's, it's not like tech, which is 28% uh, or healthcare um, or even financial. So it's, you know, it's a minor uh, sector. And I don't know, again, if this is a name. The, the fact that it's the largest component and it doesn't come to mind as a name I know kind of surprises me because that would not be typical, but it, it's very possible that it is the combination of some other companies that might have merged or a name change. I, I honestly don't know. But anyway, let's take a look at the chart. Price is broken, it's weekly cloud. It's beneath its TDST line, uh, which it gapped beneath. The lagging line is in the cloud. So we do have one low against um, the nine count. Now you see last week also got there. So we're getting closer to a potential bottom. Next week could be a 13, but we're going to have to trade lower for that to happen. What you don't want to see probably is the lagging line. Is price moved down enough that this comes beneath 260? Uh, the more this breaks under 260, the more you've changed the tune and taken away all bullishness off of the COVID low and have gone more into a bearish mode where you would sell on rallies. And if we look at where resistance is going forward, you know, right now we know there's resistance. The conversion and baselines are virtually the same price um, and you've got the cloud going forward. So you take a look out six months and you kind of get a sense that maybe in, in, in its best case scenario, this comes back to near uh, 310-ish, give or take 300, 310. Uh, again, on a percentage basis, it's a good amount. But I, there's no reason I, I look at this chart and think that this is going to explode to new highs uh, anytime soon. Next name is Sherwin Williams. Um, so this is now the cloud broke. Uh, we did get one weekly close that moved lower on it. The other weekly closes since then have moved higher. So possible fake breakdown, not sure. Let's see what it does now. Uh, First resistance now at about 281 and change from the baseline, more important resistance from the TDST line where it broke down from going forward. We have an unfinished count here uh, with an aggressive sequential count of 10 of 13. So this is still a name that's, that's vulnerable, may get a near-term bounce, but still vulnerable in the bigger 
uh, since. XPD, it's probably Air Products. Uh, same thing, 11 towards a 13, broke through its TDSD line, couldn't get really back above it, only intra-week stopped at its baseline. It's still, this still has a negative bias here. Look for this to finish out a 13 count over the next few weeks, and that doesn't mean it's necessarily a buy at that point. Um, you'd have to see this then turn around and head higher. Uh, so a potential double bottom coming, too certain to tell, still a vulnerable name. And you can see going forward again uh, over the next six months, um, towards the latter part of those next six months, this, the, the second three of the six, look for resistance 250 to about 266. New months, NEM. So here's your gold name, three weeks in a row, the low against the bottom of the cloud um, has breached the TDST line, but not, yeah, um, this to me actually can uh, or should turn solid. So th this to me is a, a breach. Uh, look for resistance here now at uh, 63 uh, or 64-ish or so. And uh, that's all I expect right now out of gold. It's, it's, you know, as long as the dollar keeps rallying, gold will remain under pressure. Freeport Mac. So copper has been under uh, significant pressure. If we look at, um, there's, there isn't one, um, hold on a sec, there isn't one specific line that necessarily makes it extremely clear, but let's kind of look at the fact that we took out this low, this low, uh, try to bounce from it, and it's gone through. Lagging line has broken. Um, we're getting a little double bottom versus last week, but today is only Tuesday of this week. Look for further price pressure here too. Um, and if we get the short-term rally, uh, look for the conversion line to be first level resistance, the baseline second. This is a vulnerable name and could easily finish out its nine count before we get a true bottom to it. Uh, Corteva, one of the better names we've looked at, uh, not so far from its highs. Um, this needs to hold, if, I mean, it's trading 53, needs to hold kind of 44-ish if we got a more significant decline. Look for support to come. And if this trades down, down against its cloud at that point, what you could do is buy against the cloud and risk uh, a Friday close or two beneath 43.74. On the upside, potential resistance at this point at uh, 57 and a quarter or so. And we'll see whether or not this ends up making a head and shoulders. We already have a shoulder and a head. One more rounding top that then breaks, gets you down to the cloud. Um, Dow Chemical, DOW, this is broken too. Cloud is broken. Both components of the cloud, both price action, lagging line, um, getting a little consolidation in here against this low. Uh, so there, there could be some buying in here but I'd still look for some pressure over the next couple of weeks to potentially finish out a nine count. Um, so that then, and, and you can see obviously where from 57 and change up to about 61 or so, 62 is gonna be the resistance going forward. IFF, International Flavors and Fragrances, also somewhat of a broken chart, but it's holding against TDST support. Uh, these dotted lines, but you do have the cloud overhead. The one thing about this chart that's a little different than others is when you see the cloud flip from positive to negative so many times, it really shows a, a sideways market. So in this case, sometimes you're just better off taking the cloud away and looking at the bigger trading ranges. And at this point, we've seen double top here, your 135, potential double bottom at 105. So you're in a trading range. You certainly can draw a downtrend line. Um, and, and take a look at where things are from that perspective to look at where resistance is. But you get a sense here, decline, rally, decline, rally, decline, rally, all these lower highs um, and lower lows, and we'll call that one equal. So still in a, in a down mode. New core, and UE, um, trying to bottom against this nine count. So this has a chance here if you're... Um, buying and looking for a bigger, um, like a longer term hold, then if you bought here, you do have to risk all the way down to kind of somewhere just beneath 90. 
and that's 20 bucks on $111 stock. So you've, on a percentage basis, you still have some decent uh, risk here, upside resistance at uh, 154, not a heck of a lot in between other than perhaps drawing a downtrend line. Let's see if we put the cloud up, if this gives us, so we're still above the cloud lagging lines above, well, we're right at the cloud lagging lines above the cloud. Um, if this was really a bearish market, you're not gonna get much above the conversion line. Um, you still have resistance against the baseline like you did the last time it traded up there. DuPont DD holding against its TDST line also for the last few weeks, trying to stage a rally from here. Um, this is one of the lower risk. If, if you think that there's a bottom here, this is one of the lower risk long ideas that we could have by here risking a Friday close underneath last week's low. Um, you have some upside to the conversion line, which has been resistance. If it broke through there, um, look for resistance against the baseline, which will continue to fall. That is it. So again, we are winding up not only this week's show, but my time on Stock Charts TV. Again, many thanks to Rachel Ackley, my producer. And I start my new uh, YouTube channel, the In The No Trader channel on Tuesday, July 26. And uh, again, here is the information that you need in order to go and follow it now. That'll be it. I will not be on uh, stock charts going forward with this weekly In The No Trader show. It moves to my YouTube channel. Thanks again, everybody, for listening. See you in two weeks. This is Rick Bensignor for In The No Trader. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.